in an ecosystem interaction between two different organism is a common phenomena not a single organism can exist without having an association with another organism if we observe we will be able to see different kinds of interactions and all these interactions make the ecosystem evolve and are vital to shape the ecological communities my name is dr arti jishad kumar and let's get started in evolutionary ecology the study of common feeding behavior such as parasitism parasitoidism and predation have special importance parasitism and parasites parasitism is a symbiotic relationship between two species of plants or animals so in parasitism there are two partners one is a parasite another is a host parasite usually feed on the host or depend on the host for food and shelter and parasite usually doesn't have the intention of killing the host or they usually don't kill the host depends on where they live parasites can be classified into three ectoparasites endoparasites and mesoparasites ectoparasites live on the host surface example flea lice ticks mosquito etc whereas endoparasites live inside the host body example intestinal worms malaria causing protozoa bacteria virus etc so in this picture it's a blood drawn from a patient with malaria and here you can see the blue color is the malarial parasite and the red color is the art red blood cell of the patient endoparasite itself can be classified into two depends on where exactly the parasite reside one is intercellular parasite intercellular parasite means they are not living inside the cell they are living in the spaces of the body of the host for example in this picture it's a cut open picture of a chicken gut and you can see in the gut space there are a lot of round worms so the round worms are included in the helminthes family so round tape worm round worm nematodes all these are example for intercellular parasite second category is intracellular parasite intracellular parasites reside within the cell of the host example malaria causing protozoans if you draw if you take blood from the malaria malarial patient and check it under microscope you will be able to see malarial parasite within uh, inside the blood so here in this picture you will be able to see the purple color malarial protozoa and you 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 can also see the red blood cells third category is mesoparasite mesoparasites enter the host body through opening and get partially embedded within the host so what does that mean so the mesoparasite once it get inside the body of the host through the body opening say mouth it will kind of anchor itself into the host body for example in this picture we can see a fish with its mouth open we can see a tongue like structure right that is not exactly a tongue that is a parasite it's an isopod so the isopod kind of got inside the fish mouth and embedded or anchored itself into the fish body in this way the parasite will get shelter as well as the food and that itself will act or behave like tongue for the fish so this kind of an association is called mesoparasitism and the parasite is a mesoparasite so other than these three category there is another category of parasite those parasites are called hyperparasites so in all the other three the parasite usually affect a host the host is not a parasite right but in case of hyperparasite the parasite affect another parasite 
so example malarial parasite so malarial parasite is a parasite first malarial parasite will go into the mosquito body so the mosquito is is an ectoparasite right so the mosquito itself feed on animals that is animal body surface for its survival or food malarial parasite live inside the mosquito so the malarial parasite is a hyper parasite whereas the mosquito is an epi parasite and the whole parasitism is called epi parasitism so hyper parasite is a parasite which live within another parasite and this kind of parasitism is called epi parasitism example protozoa malarial protozoa living inside the mosquito is an hy- is a hyper parasite where the mosquito is an ectoparasite feeding on a host which can be any animal so we already studied depending depending on where exactly it is located right now depends on its life cycle that is a parasite to finish its life whether it need a host or not there are two category of parasites one is obligate parasite second is facultative parasite obligate parasite is also known as a true parasite or holo parasite so why it is called a true parasite this is because this parasite cannot survive or finish its life cycle without a host example lice virus malarial parasite so if you remove lice from the scalp and keep it outside for a long time the lice will eventually die it cannot survive without the host another example is malarial parasite if you look at malarial parasite and observe the complete life cycle first malarial parasite lives in live inside the mosquito the mosquito will go draw blood from human for example human so while doing the drawing of blood that is bite mosquito bite the parasite will get inside the host body say human so malarial parasite will get inside the blood vessel or lymphatic vessel through the blood vessel it will reach liver so inside the liver the parasite will multiply and form neurocytes so these neurocytes will released from the will release from the liver by rupturing the liver cells and these released neurocytes will get inside the red blood cell of the host within the red blood cell these neurocytes will undergo asexual reproduction to form gametocytes so these gametocytes will be waiting for mosquitoes so once the mosquito again come and bite the same host these gametocyte will go back to the mosquito where two gamas- gametocytes will join or fuse together to form the sporocyte so here it is clear that malarial parasite require the animal that is human as well as the mosquito to complete its life cycle so without mosquito it ca- the gametocyte cannot fuse to form the sporocyte without the host that is a human the gametocyte formation will not happen that means to complete its life cycle that is the gametocyte formation and sporocyte formation it require both mosquito as well as human being this kind of parasites are called obligate or true parasites that is to complete their life cycle they require host second is facultative parasite these parasites they do not require a host to complete its life cycle for example ringworm in cats and calves and there is another nematode species and this nematode species just like the picture explain it can 
either live as a free living nematode or it can go through a host as well so even without a host it can complete its life cycle so these kind of parasites who doesn't require any host to complete its life cycle are called facultative parasites okay so now we know depends on the location as well as depends on whether it require a host or not there are different categories but other than these kind of parasitism there is another other types of parasitism as well depending depending on the lifestyle for example brood parasitism so brood parasitism usually observed in birds for example cuckoos they are famous right so the cuckoos usually are very lazy so they do not spend time to make a nest and then prepare everything for the laying of egg so instead when it's time they will go to other birds nest and lay egg just to cover that they will kind of remove one or few few eggs from the host nest so that the suspicion will not be there so cuckoo is an example for brood parasite second category is cow birds they also do the same thing but they are little kind so they do not do not usually harm the host so that is the brood parasitism second is social parasitism so ants are usually famous for their social life if the ants are living as a colony and there if there are different kinds of ants some ants will behave like a parasite and they will take advantage of labor from the other ants so this kind of parasitism is called social parasitism and this relationship or this parasite parasitic ant can be obligatory that is to complete their life cycle they require this parasitic relationship or can be facultative they do not need this parasitic relationship or they permanently do this job till they die or it can be a temporary arrangement so social parasitism usually observe in case of ants and brood parasitism usually observed in case of birds and third category is sexual parasitism so this kind of parasitism is usually observed in deep sea angler fish so these fish if we observe the females will be usually huge and males will be usually small so the male will kind of attach or anchor themselves into the female body using their jaw and sometime they will connect their circulatory system with the female so that they can the male will be finally acting as a sexual organ for the female and if once the connection connection is established the male will be completely depending on the female for its existence so this kind of a parasitism is called sexual parasitism now you'll be thinking okay parasitism will be there only in animals because i have i have mentioned about only about animals right no there are other there are other parasites as well which affect plants but in case of plants different kinds of parasites are there fungus is a kind of parasite for plants then insects are kind of parasite for plants and there are parasitic plants itself exist so fungus enter the it has to enter the plants right so it usually enter the plants through leaf stem or its broken plant hair or wound in the plant so where whenever or wherever there is opening the fungus will get inside the plant and once it get inside the plant it can make the plant sick that is it can give the plant some kind of disease i have mentioned a few diseases here in this slide so second category of parasites are insects so insects usually depending on the plants 
for their food and this can vary from aphids from worms to aphids to worms to beetles and you if you see all those insects they will feed on the plant they will lay egg on the plant and those eggs also will rupture and larvae will come out and those larva also feed on the plant so basically they are depending completely on the plant for their survival and all this all this insects if you read through the slide you can see all this insects say from aphid to worms to the beetle they feed on the plant and finally make the plant have with some rotten disease or some mold or some kind of disease so this kind of parasitism is not actually good for the plants third is plants plants itself act like parasite for plants and these also there are two category hemi parasites so they are like partial parasites they can they are photosynthetic but for the nutrients and for water they will depend on the host example european mistletoe plants so this mistletoe plants they are photosynthetic because they have chlorophyll but for water and for the minerals they will kind of depends on the host by drawing water and mineral from the stem second category is holo parasite these are not photosynthetic they don't have chlorophyll so they have to depend completely for food as well as for shelter on the host and host has to make an extra food and nutrients for this parasite example cascuta cascuta is a yellow color slender structures which grows all over the plant say tree so this cascuta get inserted itself into the stem and it will take the nutrients directly from the stem so the second category of feeding behavior is parasitoidism so parasitoidism is a kind of relationship where the host will eventually die we have seen in parasitism even if the parasite depends on the host it doesn't kill the host it will make or make the host sick for some time but it doesn't kill the host but in case of parasitoidism the parasitoid that is the organism getting benefit from the host eventually kill the host and parasitoid can be of two kinds if it is existing on the outer surface it can it can it is called as ectoparasitoid and if it exists within the host it is called endoparasitoid and depends on its mode of action parasitoid can be classified into idiobiont or coenobiont so idiobiont parasitoids are usually ectoparasitoids that is they usually feed on the surface of the host so if the host is moving and very active it can it cannot sit and feed on the host right so what it usually do is it kind of immobilize or paralyze the host before start feeding or laying egg on top of the parasite host so idiobionts are ectoparasitoids and they kind of immobilize or inhibit the development of host before getting benefit from the host whereas coenobiont usually are endoparasitoids so these endoparasitoids live within the host so they usually see the host as a as a factor for their food or a, as a source for source for their source of their food as well as to protect themselves from the predator so they usually don't kill the host on the spot they usually take advantage of the host feed on the host and eventually the host will die parasitoids are classified further depending or based on number for example 
parasitoids are classified as monophagous or polyphagous depending on the number of different kinds of host it can attack with success monophagous is a category where a parasitoid can attack only a single host polyphagous is a condition where a parasitoid or a single parasitoid are, is capable of attacking multiple host so second classification is based on number of parasitoids attacking a single host and depending on this parasitoids are classified as solitary parasitoids and gregarious parasitoids solitary parasitoids are those which are capable of attacking only a single host at a time that is one parasitoid per host but in gregarious parasitoids there are multiple parasitoids involved in this interaction and multiple parasitoids attacking a single host in most of the parasitoidism there are only two members involved one is the parasitoid another is the host but there are other varieties of parasitoids where multiple members are involved example in hyperparasitoidism members are hyperparasitoids so hyperparasitoids usually affect or feed on a primary parasitoid and this primary parasitoid usually feed on or depends on a host so there are three members involved host primary parasitoid which is depending on the host and secondary parasitoid or hyperparasitoid depending on the primary parasitoid so in this picture you'll be able to see yellow white color cocoons and a wasp walking through the cocoons the wasp is a primary parasitoid which is feeding on a host and that host in this particular example is lepidoptera and the wasp cocoon is a primary parasitoid and the wasp which is feeding on the cocoon is the secondary or hyperparasitoid and here in this case particular case the secondary parasitoid is a chalcid wasp if in a parasitoidism multiple parasitoids are involved that kind of parasitoidism is called multiple parasitoidism so in the second picture you can see a worm infested with so many green color cocoons right all these cocoons are from two different wasps but they included in the same wasp family but once you look at it they all look the same right because all the two different wasps are coming from the same family but they are not the same wasp so two different or multiple parasitoids coexist in the same host so once the egg whatever the wasp kept when it rupture the larvae will come out and the larvae will start feeding on the same host so in this picture there are only two different wasp lay their egg on top of this host if there are multiple species or multiple organisms involved then that kind of multiple parasitoidism is called super parasitism and in case of gregarious parasitoidism those parasitoids lay multiple egg on top of the single host so you can see a small worm carrying hundreds of eggs so once all this egg rupture the larvae will come out and all this larvae will start feeding on the same host so that will create a kind of competition and if there are multiple say hundreds of larvae comes out all of them cannot feed on the single host right once the host is dead they will start fighting with each other for food and sometime most of them will survive that is the parasitoids and sometime one or two only will be surviving so depending on the number of 
partners involved in the parasitoidism there are three kinds hyper parasitoidism where two different kinds of parasitoids that is primary parasitoid and secondary parasitoids are involved and usually the secondary parasitoid or hyper parasitoid feed on a parasitoid that is a primary parasitoid and primary parasitoid usually feed on a host and in case of multiple parasitoidism multiple parasitoids of the same species exist or coexist by feeding on a single host and in case of multiple parasitoids cytoidism if there are multiple parasitoids involved then it is called super parasitism in case of gregarious a single parasitoid itself lay multiple egg on single host and once the egg rupture the larvae will start feeding on the host and these larvae will have a competition within themselves for the food and most of them or few of them will survive not all the time all the larvae will survive so there will be a competition for the food and only few of them will survive at the end now we will see what is the major difference between a parasite and a parasitoid as i already mentioned by definition itself parasites are those which feed on a host or depend on a host for its food and shelter without killing or having intention of killing the host but in case of parasitoids they depend on the host for food and shelter and eventually lead to the death of the host so usually death of the host happen in case of parasitoidism that is not happening in case of parasitism parasites can be ectoparasite or endoparasite similarly parasitoids also there are two category ectoparasitoid endoparasitoids if it is an ectoparasitoid it usually immobilize or inhibit the development of host which is not observed in case of parasites and in case of endoparasitoid they usually feed the host from the inside and eventually lead to the death of the host and in case of parasite the host are usually plants or animals but in case of parasitoids the host are usually insects belonging to the family of anthropods and the examples of parasites involve virus bacteria malaria causing protozoans parasitic plants etc but in case of parasitoids usually these are larvae of certain wasp most of them are larvae from certain wasp next we will see what exactly the difference between parasite and a predator so predator is the third feeding common feeding behavior which is observed in in your env- an ecology right so now we will see what exactly is the difference between parasite and a predator so parasite usually feed on a host and predator usually feed on a prey parasites are smaller than the host but predators are larger and stronger than the host parasites feed on the host either from outside or from inside but in case of predator it usually kill the prey and eat from the outside right as a whole so parasites doesn't kill the host but still take the nutrients and shelter from the host but in case of predator they kill the prey and feed on the prey right and third the parasite host relationship is in parasite and host relationship the partner getting benefit is parasite which is actually uh, the weaker weaker partner right compared to the host but in case of predator prey relationship predator is getting benefit where the predator is the stronger 
and larger member or larger in that association in case of parasite host relationship the specificity parasite actually very choosy they are specific so they will affect only a kind of whatever kind they are looking for they will affect only that kind of host but in case of predator for example lion or tiger they don't have any specificity right they can feed on calf or cattle or deer or a rabbit so the specificity for the prey is not there in case of predator if you like my video give me a thumbs up and if you want me to talk about some other subject please write it down in the comment section and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to press the bell button for getting notification thanks for watching bye